Okay, I guess as a prelude to uh, the other talks that follow, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, I guess, what is my own personal learning journey about computing education, as well as what we think is a, a platform which helps people go on their own journey towards learning too. So we're today in the computer science department in Cambridge, and uh, computing in Cambridge has had a long history, and many of you, I'm sure, will have heard of Turing or Babbage, uh, but I wanted to highlight uh, another early project that really was the cornerstone of our department, which was the EDSAC. So this ran its first computer program in 1949, and uh, later in life, as he became Professor Sir Maurice Wilkes, uh, was instrumental in starting this platform. And one of the things that was uh, so good about it in, some, in so many ways was that Maurice was uh, keen on building something that was practical and was going to see real use. So we didn't build a system that was the fastest or the most exciting architecturally, but build one that's going to get users, allow him to explore uh, software and working with others to see the potential for automatic computing in the sciences and in industry. And it was so successful that uh, they had loads and loads of users banging on the door. And uh, after running a number of informal summer schools and informal training events, the university learned, launched uh, the world's first uh, taught uh, computer science degree, the Diploma in Numerical Analysis and Automatic Computing. This uh, started in uh, October 1953. Now, I don't have time to talk about this in any detail, but there's a lovely book that was written at the time of our 75th anniversary, and you can also get a PDF download of that book from our website as well. So if you want to find out more about uh, computing, in history, uh, computing in Cambridge and its history, you can do so here. Um, now, diploma is sort of a, a word for, I guess, what we might in modern day times think about as a, a master's degree. So this was a course that people had done a first degree already in uh, um, a science or mathematics or engineering would then do this course to, to learn about computing. And this idea of uh, teaching, of course, uh, then de developed into our undergraduate program in computer science in Cambridge. And I arrived as a, uh, a new lecturer. And the first thing I did, I taught a C and C++ course. And I did what all good computer science lecturers do, is I wrote this traditional lecture course and uh, ran it, and the students liked it, but I wasn't that satisfied with it. I felt they spent far too much time listening to me gavel on about uh, C and C++, and not enough time actually doing. So when the opportunity came to us to do a second course, Programming in Java, I paired up with Andy Rice, who was another new uh, lecturer in the department, and uh, we got rid of all the lectures, and instead wrote a set of workbooks and had uh, practical classes each week where students then learnt uh, about uh, programming in Java. And importantly, we gave automated feedback to them um, immediately. So they would uh, write their code, submit it, and we would then give them uh, feedback on their work, hints and tips on how to improve. And that was so popular, in fact, that we then did a second year course on uh, um, more advanced Java the following year. Following on from that, we then looked at uh, another lecture course, Prologue, and we got excited by the idea of MOOCs uh, from the US, and we thought that the workbook was rather passive, and we were interested in how we might do a more active kind of uh, um, teaching medium for that part of the program. And so we built a uh, um, so web framework that would display uh, um, a video uh, of a mini lecture, normally about six to nine minutes long, it would pause and allow the students to try and answer some of the questions that we had for the prologue course. Uh, and this also was uh, really popular with students. Uh, but this also connected us with other people across the university, in particular in engineering uh, and also in physics. And Mark Warner and Lisa Jardine Wright in physics had just started to look at how to try and improve uh, physics education in uh, UK schools. And so uh, Andy and I started talking to them about a the website and the initial plan was to have some kind of website with the slightly horrendous name of the Rutherford School's Physics Project. And uh, Mark and Lisa prepared lots of really exciting uh, problems that students might be able to tackle, uh, written in LaTeX and produced nice PDFs. Um, and Andy and I uh, talked with them and said, well, how about this automated feedback? Can we try and give students some feedback about the questions that they're trying to answer? Uh, and thankfully, Mark and Lisa were so open-minded, they said, yeah, sure, let's do that. Let's go and build a, a more exciting uh, learning framework. And the motivation for this was that uh, they wanted the same things that I wanted from the programming course. Students learn through doing rather than just 
uh, reading a textbook or listening passively to a lecture. So um, the first version of the website did look like somewhat like this, and we provided PDFs of, that students could download to get, get us started. And that gave us enough time to then go and build the first version of what became uh, Isaac Physics. So thankfully, we employed some people to do some graphics design and also uh, think about the name for it, and they came up with much better graphics and a much better name than we could have done. And the first version launched in 2014, and there we supported multiple choice and numeric questions. Uh, and we also had a way of giving feedback to students, um, whether they got it right or not, and uh, also some hints and tips. Now, this wasn't a course. It wasn't like an A-level course to do physics. There were just sets of questions, and you could use a question chooser to go and pick particular areas of physics or maths that you'd like to study. Now, our philosophy also was that we didn't provide answers. We just provided hints to help people. Now, um, we made a big mistake in version one. We had very few users. We forgot the teachers. Version two, however, we realized our mistake, and uh, we integrated teachers as a core part of what we were trying to do. And so we introduced teacher assignments. So here, teachers can uh, invite their students to join the platform. They can connect with them into a group, and they can then set them um, the problems that you saw in the first version as homework uh, for them to do. And importantly, they can also then uh, get a mark book that's updated in real time, which shows them uh, no one could answer question five, and Johnny didn't do his homework. And that means the teacher knows they can go through question five in the class, and they can also talk to Johnny. But running alongside this, um, and I forget exactly who came up with the idea, um, was a genius idea of having a book, which seems a bit of an odd thing to do when you've built a website. But we created a physical printed book, which wasn't a textbook, but was rather a problem, a set of problems for uh, that were available on the, on the website. And you see some examples outside, actually, for Isaac Computer Science, uh, if you like. Uh, and we sold this book in tens of thousands of copies. Uh, it was really, really successful. And, uh, and teachers loved it because they could say, well, do page 36 for your homework. And uh, they could then answer them on the online uh, service, get the immediate feedback and help. And the teachers then didn't have any marking to do either. And so as part of this, we started to explore uh, some of the research topics as well. So we looked at how we used hints on the platform uh, and whether we're doing that effectively, and also looked at uh, secure ways of pairing together students and teachers. One question we then had, of course, but we had loads of users and loads of people answering questions, but was this any good? And so we did a study uh, with UCAS, which is the University and College Admission Service in the UK, where we looked at uh, cohort matching students that use Isaac with students who had similar demographics but were not using Isaac, and explored whether there was a difference in terms of grade outcome for those users. And we found that the improvement was equivalent to lifting 40% uh, of a cohort from a C to a B grade at A level. We also found that they were very significantly more likely to apply to high tariff universities, receive an offer, achieve the grades to get in, and then take up the place. So then roll around to 2019, and we had Isaac Computer Science uh, um, as a concept. And so this came about because the DfE wanted to fund uh, more uh, teaching or support for teachers in um, uh, computer science at A-level, uh, as well as earlier years. And Andy and I were really keen to do this because it's our own subject. This is something we'd like to, to do. But we're also very much aware that the earlier versions of Isaac so much of it was done by Mark and Lisa and a big team in physics, right? The content, the events, the outreach, uh, teacher training and CPD, etc. Uh, and um, Andy and I had no experience of doing any of these things, nor um, necessarily the bandwidth to do it. So it was really exciting when uh, Raz and Pi were keen to partner with us. And so just like we did with Isaac Physics, we ran the tech platform, analytics and so on in this department, and Raspberry Pi uh, did everything else. And so this has been also a, a huge success. Now, there's lots of metrics we might choose to measure success. Um, but you know, one of them is thinking about features and things we've added to the platform. We've done lots of that. But for me, because I'm interested in people doing things, question attempts is the thing that uh, I really care about. So um, I'm pleased to announce that this year we've just reached 100 million question attempts combined across Isaac Physics and Isaac Computer Science.
which is, which is pretty amazing. And so, so this graph you can see, you know, our first website, we got no users, as I said. Then we remember the teachers, right? And we started to get more interest. And it's just grown year on year on year. Now, it's not all a bed of roses, because I think one of the things that, if I were to critique the graph, is we get lots of excitement in September, October time each year, and then waning interest thereafter. And we've tried lots of things over the years to try and improve that. And maybe if you squint a bit, it's got a little bit better. Um, but it's definitely an area that we need to, to improve on further. This is physics plus computer science. This is physics plus computer science. Although computer science is a small fraction of the total number. I think it's, I think it's 96 million for physics and around 4 million for computer science. So um, computer science is sort of this kind of area around here. And we've got more years to grow yet. Um, so what next? So one of the things that we're doing is uh, STEM Smart uh, in the university where we're trying to support um, students who are studying STEM subjects in, um, in schools to then make a competitive application to university, supporting those from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds. And Isaac is used for the weekly tutorials as part of that. And I'm pleased to see that uh, in the first uh, phase of that program, we've had uh, 370,000 question attempts or 27 questions per week per student on average. The other thing, and the reason why we're here today, is, of course, uh, the Computing <coughs> Education Research Centre. Uh, and for me, this sort of joins us back full circle, back to EDSAC, right? We've built a thing which lots of people are using, um, but let's, let's use this and other things to try and explore how uh, we can make the world better. And so I'm so um, pleased for the support from Raspberry Pi to be able to start this new uh, research centre to explore some of those longer-term research questions that I think we should be addressing. <laughs>